Hey, hey, everybody, welcome on in. It's Clay Share Live. I am Jessica Putnam Phillips, and tonight we are going to be talking about and showing you how to use sand bows, underglaze decals, also called underglaze transfers. Some people call them tissue transfers. Now you can make your own, which I do have a tutorial on Clay Share that'll teach you how to make your own uh, newsprint using newsprint. So they're like a monoprint process, it's really fun. We also have in ClayshareCon from 2022, Kathy Skaggs joined us and she showed a version of making your own transfers. So you might wanna check that out, it was really great. But today we're gonna to talk about sand bows under glaze decals and we're gonna put them on a couple pieces, talk about when you should apply them and how to get the best results out of using under glaze decals and also talk about glazing and things you want to watch out for. So we're going to be live here on ClayShare on the ClayShare app on ClayShare.com on my YouTube channel. Also we are streaming on Instagram. Instagram folks just have a one camera view. The rest of you get the full studio view with the four camera setup. So all right, hope everybody's well. Uh, I was away last week. I was up in Canada visiting our friends in the north. I would say the great white north but uh, where I was, I was in Montreal, they had less snow than he, us here in Vermont. Not saying parts of Canada don't have more snow, because I know they do, but where I was, it wasn't snowy, which was kind of a break. Come back home, come south to more snow. All right, so here's some pieces I've made in the past using sandbow underglaze decals, and I love them. They're a great way to get pattern and decoration on your pieces. Now, yes, you can make your own, but not everybody has the time nor the inclination to do so. So if that is the case, you wanna pick some up. Also, I can do my own. I mean, I do my own designs all the time, but sometimes I just like other designs. I don't necessarily always wanna use my own patterns, right? So it's nice to have variety. I think, uh, We'll do a little close-up over here on camera too. So this is a really fun one. This is a spring pattern that they do, and I just love it. It's these cute flowers. This is actually a vertical, vertical piece. Although you could do it horizontal, but I made it to be a vertical one. And this is a companion piece to an egg tray that I did a few years ago. And uh, it sits, you know, the egg tray has the same pattern on it. I don't have that anymore though, that sold. But I kept this. <laughs> I can't keep everything. Uh, here's another piece made with that same design right here. Uh, this is one of our, this was from the circle slab vase and I made a wall hanger out of it just by putting a hole in it. So if you haven't done the circle slab vase, check that class out because it's a really fun one. And you can see my lovely signature. This is a studio sample so I can sign it any way I want. So I do, All right? And it just has a little hole right here to hang it up. And there's the inside, it's very exciting. Uh, here's a fun one, little soap dish that I did using De La Design Gifts soap dish cutter. And then the glazed here on the, in, the uh, pattern on the inside is my Scandi Birds and that's in a black and white design. Now you can fill these in with color if you want, but when you get the black and white ones, but some of them are multicolor. And then the rim I believed is my, I believe I used my black copper glaze for the rim and then there's the back, just clear glaze on top of the underglaze decal. And then this mug we did, this fun mug, the gnome mug. Now the underglaze decal was a Halloween edition that Sam Bao did this past Halloween on this hand-built mug. The orange, I believe, I'm trying to remember, this is Speedball's orange on the inside and on the handle. I'm pretty sure that's what I used for that. And then this little guy right here is a cutter from De La Design Gifts to get that cute little gnomey. So that one is a sweet one. All right. I see some folks got to chat with Kathy Skaggs at Nsika. Yeah, she's great. I really liked her a lot. So this is my mushroom decal design and there's like three or four colors of it, but I put it on the inside of the plate and then did a little blue around the rim. And then here's the Cardinals and Birches with the blue background. I think there's three different color versions of this, three colorways as you could call it, right? Colorways, because we're fancy. And then black copper again glazed with it. And then I loved it so much I did a platter. It's gonna be too big. Can you see it? Zoom out. It's too big. Ah, yes. Thank you. Thank you, tech guy, for zooming out for me. So this is the Cardinal and Birches, one sheet, one full sheet, because they come pretty big on a platter. I did use, you know, there's a lot of De La Designs uh, cutters involved when I use these, and I use that for my rim. There's the back, 
can see the back of it. And then the, the rim of this, so I didn't write it down, but I'm pretty sure I used Rutile Blue from Amico with Light Flux from Mako. Pretty sure that's what I put on it. Or Honey Flux from Amico. It's one or the other. Do a test, find out. You'll know both then, and then you can pick the one you like better. All right, so these are just some examples, and of course, you know, you can always take your underglaze decals and you can, you know, cut them up and use them. As I've shown in many classes, I have a collage class where we take the underglaze decals and we cut them up and we collage them on. So you don't necessarily have to cut up like a nice brand new full sheet either. You can take your scraps and save them. Do not throw your scraps out ever. And you can take those scraps and you can collage them onto a piece. So I have right here today, here's Sandbow's little sheet. And this is what they sent me. They sent me some of the new Easter. They have three Easter designs is my understanding. So they sent them to me. They are, I guess we'll go to the close up view again. And I hope the camera can pick this up because this one's really faint. Maybe if I put this behind it, you'll be able to see it better. So this is rainbow egg, they call it. That's so hard to see, isn't it? I've got, maybe if I fold it in half. And in half again. <laughs> better? Any better? Maybe if you zoom in, it'll get it better. Zoom out, zoom in, you know. I'm so demanding. There you go, now you can see it. Everybody at home on Clayshare can see it. Look at that. So there's these cute little pastel eggs and it's called rainbow egg. Very cute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, you, I don't know, maybe you wanna stay zoomed in. I don't know if that, if you need to be that close. And then I got this one and this is a sweet one because the rainbow egg is more of an all over pattern. This one you could all use it as an all over, but these sweet little bunnies, oh, they'd be so easy to cut out. And then you can just use the bunnies and the little birdies and just put a couple of them on something. So you're not using this whole sheet. The sheet is huge. Um, is it 16 by 20? It's big, it's big. So you get a lot of decals. And then I have one more. This one is um, Running Hairs. I, I'm calling it Running Hairs. I don't know the name of it. They only have three on Sandbow. Their website is chinaclayart.com. There's only three Easter designs. You will not be confused if you go to look. Uh, there's the hairs. So they're little leaping bunnies. There's some eggs. There's some wildflowers. This is a really cute one too. And this is another one that you could cut up and use bits. So you're not limited to using it as a full sheet, although you could. Um, and also with the black and white one, it'd be really nice to color in these elements. Like we've done a, we did in the fall, a watercolor version. Can't remember, it was the, using my orchard decal. And we colored that in using, I think Colors for Earth on it. And it, it looked amazing, it, it came out great. So it's a good way to colorize your black and white or uncolored decals. All right, the name of the collage decal video, Underglaze Collage? <laughs> I can't look it up right now because I'm here with you all. I wish I could. Um, look up, Kevin can look it up. Well, Kevin will do that. We'll have him look that up. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna talk about this I'm gonna give you guys a sneak peek of what I'm doing in prime time for my premium members. So Clayshare Live is our free live tutorial. It's a little little chance to, for people to come in and see for free what we do here at Clayshare. Just a tiny tip of the iceberg of what Clayshare has and offers. But we also do a private class, a live class right after this at 6.15. And in that we have a much more in-depth start to finish project for our members. So it's only for our premium members and this is what we're gonna be making. This, you get the template for it. So you'll be able to make this cute egg plate. I'm gonna show you how I created this. Some of you on Instagram might have seen part of this already. And we're gonna do Scraffito and Mishima on this as well as the stamping. And we used under glazed decals. That's coming next, but you gotta wait. Premium members get that. So I gotta cover it back up so it doesn't dry out too fast. And then I end up carving clay that's way too dry and you don't wanna do that. Okay. So what's an underglaze decal? Well, an underglaze decal or underglaze transfer is underglaze, kind of, right? We figure that out. 
makes sense. It's underglaze that has been screen printed onto rice paper. That's what this paper is made of, it's rice paper. And then that's it. It's on the sheet, it dries, and you put it on your pottery. So what you're doing is you're transferring this printed image onto clay. And to get this activated again, you have to get it wet, and that allows it to transfer. That's why some folks call them underglaze transfers, because that's the actual act. That's what you're doing. You're transferring. Some people call them decals because that's what the object is. It's a decal or a decal for my folks across the pond, right? Although it probably seems very strange for me to say decal. I don't know. Anyhow, that's what it is. It's underglaze. And just like any kind of underglaze, there's some issues you have to be concerned with. One, once you apply it to the surface, if you rub it, it will smear. Especially these fine lines, you don't want to smear them. So you don't want to rub them, you don't want to wipe on them before they're fired. And even after they have been bisque fired, you want to be very careful and not rub and scrub on them because it can still come off until it has glaze on top of it. Now these from Sandbow can be fired to cone 05 to cone 10. I would test them, cone 10, some might run and some colors might burn out. So just test if you do cone 10 and be aware that not all of them will work at cone 10. So the black ones, uh, the black and white ones should work the best. They might run depending on your glaze. The other thing you wanna consider is what is the glaze you're using. If you're using a clear glaze, you wanna make sure it's zinc free. Uh, zinc glazes can interact and they can kind of eat away at the colors. They can also cause color shifts. So if you have this really bright green, it can go more to a brown or a brown green. Your colors won't be as bright and true, potentially. Not all zinc glazes do that. So again, you have to test. So when you get your underglaze decal, the best thing you should do is have some pieces you're not invested in too much that you're not so in love with that you would cry if it turns out not the way you hope, right? So make some pieces, roll out a slab of clay, do some test tiles, and then cut a little bit of your underglaze decal off and then use that. Now you can apply these to wet clay, so freshly thrown clay right here, and I have a tutorial on making a, we do a large vase shape using underglaze decals. We also do a mug where I show you how to use the underglaze decal in a wheel thrown mug and also how to put the underglaze decal on the handle so it wraps all the way around your handle. So you gotta check that class out. That's a really great class. We also did the hand building one. So this here, and oh, the let it snow mugs. We did let it snow mugs with the underglaze decals and that was in a prime time tutorial last fall. So that was a really fun one. So here's a cup I threw. Um, it's almost leather hard, t uh, slightly tacky. Slightly tacky, not, not too tacky. So this is a really good time to apply an underglaze decal. It's dry enough that it's not gonna warp or be distorted as I'm applying the decal. And it is still wet enough that I don't have to apply a lot of water to it to get that transfer to happen. So it's, a really, it's in a really good place. The other thing, and I have some slabs here, and we'll do a slab. Let me get one of them out. And for slab work, you know, when you're applying to the wet stage, you just go ahead and roll your clay out like you normally do, and then you're gonna put, and I like to take, if I'm using a template, and cut my shape out so that I make the underglaze decal the same size as my template. I don't wanna waste any of my underglaze decal. So I do that, and then I lay it on my slab of clay, and I just transfer it. I'm gonna scooch this stuff off to the side so I can get this here. We'll use this side. Now you can apply this to greenware that has dried. You just gotta keep in mind, when you're adding moisture or trying to put them on dry greenware, you're, risk, you're risking cracking because that clay's already dried. And once you put moisture in it, you're making a wet area and it's gonna dry slower and it could pull apart there. So you've reintroduced water, you're causing a weak spot. It could crack, but it could be fine. So just keep that in mind. You can apply them to bisqueware, and I show you in our clay share class on a bisqued plate. And I think I do a mug, and I think that is maybe the collage class. But that class, um, the one thing about bisqueware, you won't get as good of a transfer. 
you get the best transfer from clay that is either freshly rolled out like this or freshly thrown, almost leather hard. The bisque ware, because it's already been bisque fired, it's still very porous, yes, but the it just can't pull everything off. And so you get more of a vintage look. So it's, it's not as crisp of a transfer, I would say. So this is your chance if you have questions about using underglaze decals. Now's the time to ask me. So you love the Sambao decals. They're the best quality you find. They're very good quality. Um, Elon transfers are really good as well. She, I believe, Sandbow makes hers for her. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure because when I were, started working with Dan at Sandbow to make my designs, he asked me if I wanted to do what Elon transfers does and she gets them from him and then she sells them. And I said, no, 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 I'm just gonna send you my designs. You just pay me a little small commission and I'm happy with that. I don't want to be wholesaling, selling them myself. No, I don't want to do that. I have so much going on. You all know I do not have time to do anything else. All right, so something like this right here is a slab that I would make a mug from. And mugs are a four inch by 12 inch. That's what I usually cut my clay. Now, this is rolled out to three eighths of an inch, which is the thickness I roll my clay out for hand building but I roll it out that thick, expecting to thin it down by rolling texture in it. So if I'm going to be using underglaze decals, I don't need it to be that thick. It's a little too thick. So what you wanna do is you're gonna to wanna to thin it down a little more. So what you, you can do is you can set your slab roller if that's how you're rolling it, or if you're rolling by hand, you just roll it to one quarter of an inch. Don't do three eighths, just do one quarter. And I know even that seems thick, but remember, the clay is going to shrink. This clay shrinks 12%, so that's a decent amount. So I definitely want to make it thinner, but don't make it too thin. That's where you run into problems when you make your clay too thin for hand building. All right, I'm going to grab the uh, camera for Instagram and put you guys down so you can see. You guys can see and I can see you. Right, so I use a slab roller, but in my, you guys, I have a free intro to hand building class where I show you how to roll a slab out by hand. You do not. I use a slab roller because I will roll out 50 to 100 pounds a day when I'm working in the studio. That's a lot of clay. I also will make really large platters and I need to have a big sheet of clay. So for my needs, I need a slab roller. But at home, for you all that might not be, you know, working full time as a potter, I tell you a rolling pin a nice rolling pin and a flat surface to work on is really all you need. You can go to your home supply store. You can pick these up there with the dowels. They also sell these packs of slab thickness strips at ceramic supply stores and you pick them up and you get, I believe eight different ones. They're, they're two pairs of each size. So four sizes, which equals eight. This one here is about three eighths of an inch. This one's pretty thick. I also have one that's a little thinner. This is my quarter inch thick pair. Now when you buy them from the home supply store like I do, they don't always match color. That doesn't matter, I don't care. But you can use these as guides to roll out to get the exact thickness. I don't use these when I hand roll out clay because I've been doing it for a little while. All right, I don't wanna say how long anymore. <laughs> I have a birthday coming up in two and a half weeks. Y'all will find out how old I am finally and then you'll be like, oh wow, she really has been making pots for a long time, right? Because I, I love it when people are like, you look 25. No, 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 I don't. All right, so I'm thinning this down to about a quarter of an inch. And then I'm smoothing the surface out just using this yellow rib. Those of you who went to Inseca, I hope you picked up all the little hand tools you needed. That's the best chance to get them. Get yourself some Cheryl mud tools, some Dolan clay knives, some diamond core tools. Get some GR pottery forms, some De La Design cutters. Get yourself some glazes from Mako and Amico and Clayscapes. So many good things. Michael Harbridge was there. Hope you guys saw him and said hi. 
So you have a birthday one month from today. So we're April April birthday babies. Woohoo! All right. Let's go ahead and I'm going to go, you know what? I'm going to grab my template for a mug because I'm not going to make the mug, but if I'm going to put the effort in, I might as well do it right. Yeah, that's right. All right, so here's my template for making a mug. Four inches by 12 inches. You can use a four inch cookie cutter or you can use a three and a half inch cookie cutter. It just depends what you want for your bottom, meaning how it looks. A four inch cookie cutter is gonna give you more of a straight to the table look. I guess this is a good one. This one here, well, I don't know what camera Kev's on. We'll go to two. There you go, you go there. So this is a, yes, it's full of yellow underglaze too. I'm not drinking it, don't be fooled. I know it's, in, I'm using it to put on. <laughs> Sometimes you get thirsty, you just gotta drink your underglaze. No, don't drink your underglaze. Uh, this is the four inch right here, right? So that gives you a nice bottom. Do I have, I don't know if I have the three. The three inch nips it in a little more, three and a half. Anyhow, just in case. All right, so we're just gonna cut out this. And I have hand building mug classes. I have quite a few. So if you wanna learn to make a mug, I got you covered. All right, so that's gonna be for the walls of it. And I don't really need to worry about the bottom for this tutorial for you guys. I'm just gonna scooch this slab off, put it out of the way. All right, so I got this done, so I know the size I have. Let's do, oh, I don't know. Oh, I'm gonna do this one because it's so cute. I really like it a lot. And so we have our clay cut out, and if you want to be really frugal, which who doesn't want to be very frugal with their, I'm moving this. Could end up having a catastrophe. So if you want to be really frugal, this is what you do. You take your cutter, your little uh, template here, and you line it up where you want it, and then take a Sharpie marker. Sharpie marker will burn out in the kiln, so you do not have to worry about it leaving anything behind. If you are concerned, you could flip this over and you could make your mark on the back if you want. Make sure that's got to the end. And then I just need to notch that so I know where to cut it. So now I know my area that I need to cut. And that way there's no waste. But if there was waste, we would save it and we would use it for a collage. So I have an envelope that in the envelope I just stick all of my underglaze decals, the little scraps. And then when it gets full enough or I just feel like making a collage, I just take them out and use them up. Okay, so this just gets folded up. If you get these wet, it will start to activate them. Try to keep them away from wet work. Try to keep them in a place where they're a little drier. You didn't see Easter decals at Nsika. I don't know if he had any at Nsika, but I do love these bunnies. I know, they're so cute. All right, before we put this on, I'm just gonna soften the outside edge. Now, because later when we try to do this, what will happen is I will probably smear my underglaze decal. So I'm just doing it now. Make sure there's not any hair or anything in the way. If there is, it could prevent you from getting a really nice transfer. You'll end up with a hairline. If you wanna use underglaze, you could color your clay with underglaze and then let it dry so it's not tacky anymore and then just put your underglaze decal on. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put this little guy right here. I'm leaving myself a tiny bit of room at the top. And you put them face down and you can tell which side is which when you look at them, I'll open it back up. See, the back is very dull, the front is much brighter. So we get that on there and then I like to use a rib to smooth out from the center. 
to get rid of those air bubbles, but also to smooth my design out. You could put this on a piece that you'd rolled up already, a cylinder. That's fine too. So you get this on. Smooth everything out. It goes on really easy. And if you want to know how to make a mug using an underglaze decal slash transfer, you should check out the tutorial. I know I'm cutting off the bunny heads at the bottom. I know. I mean, I could have cut. OK, so here's the thing. If that's an issue for you, which I can see where it would be, it's, it's a little unnerving maybe. So when you're cutting these out, I could have cut out, right? around the bunny heads and also it would have been a little better because then I could have had the whole bunnies to use on another piece. So yeah, 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 I know. All right, so we smoothed it out with that rib, but I'm gonna pounce it with a damp sponge. And this is a sponge that I dipped in clean water and then squeezed it out really well. I don't wanna sop it. I don't wanna get it soaking wet. I just wanna pounce it and I'm making sure I'm pressing down And then you wait. It can take up to five minutes for a design to transfer. It depends how wet your clay already was. Freshly rolled out clay like this, well, this was rolled out about an hour ago. So it's fairly fresh. It's not flippy floppy fresh, but it is pretty good. So let me check just to see where we're at. Mm, that's not a bad transfer. We could wait a little bit. And then you can go back over very lightly if you want, smoothing back out with the rib. Uh, I have tried with brushes where you take the brush and let's see if I can find a good one. That's not a bad one. And you take a brush and you use your brush like this and you can get the brush slightly damp and it, it works too, but I really like this. So at this point, I'm just going to pounce. Maybe a stencil brush would work really well too. I haven't thought of that. You just don't want to stipple on the clay and add texture, or maybe you do. I mean, I say maybe you don't want to, but maybe you do. So you have a 16 inch Bailey slab roller. That is a great little slab roller. All right, I am going to check. Looks good. All right, go to camera two, we'll do a peel. You are there, oh, look at you. I'm gonna come in close, closer. Too, no, it's too close, sorry. <laughs> so you can see the peel, the appeal. Do you see the appeal of underglaze transfers? Okay, so do you all know, you're, if you're making pots for any length of time, you will know potters love puns. We are punny, very punny. It, it, when I was an undergrad student, it was nothing but puns, right? Used to, Good times. All right, so here we have what will become a super sweet little mug. It, honestly, it's ready to you know be rolled up and have the bottom put on and everything. Because it's so fresh, I would take a bit of cornstarch. Let my cornstarch go. I would take a bit of cornstarch and a, a brush. A lot of folks like to use an inexpensive makeup brush. I have this really lovely. Uh, color this really lovely fancy brush that I will often use because I don't I keep forgetting to pick up like a cheap makeup brush and you just pounce this on the surface because you want to absorb the moisture when we're hand building with it if you touch the outside and it's damp you will smear your underglaze decal and I don't want you to do that you don't want to do that so just pounce it with a little bit of cornstarch. Now, some folks like to use a sock or something filled with cornstarch and they pounce that on. You can do that too if that works for you. As long as your underglaze transfer or your decal, well, it's actually a transfer now. It's no longer a decal, right? It's been transferred, so it's a transfer. So as long as this isn't too wet and doesn't transfer back onto your little thing you're pouncing with and leave more dark spots, or a salt shaker maybe, if it's fine enough. All right, so then you make your mug from your slab and it's done. It's pretty cool though, right? Really, they're really easy to use. All right, so that's one way to do it. 
Now I'm going to show you on a wheel thrown piece and I'm going to grab my banding wheel. Like puns, like buns. <laughs> Who doesn't like bun puns? Everybody likes bun puns. All the, all the puns. All right, so this is a cup I threw uh, this morning, actually. So it's dry enough so that I can touch the outside. It's not sticking to me, but it's still a little wet. I haven't wired it off yet. Um, I did wire it, but I haven't, I haven't pulled it off. I'm not going to pull it off yet. All right, I want to do the running hairs. This is a smaller cup. It would be a cute uh, child's cup. It might be a little big, but it is going to shrink 12%, so I think it probably will be okay. But I want to do the hairs because I want to cut out them and put them around. I don't want to leave it as a full sheet. I want to take all the little elements and cut them out and then reassemble them. So kind of like making a collage. This one, because it has the bunnies on it and the flowers, and the eggs, the eggs are what really makes it Easter. So if you want to get this because you love rabbits, but you don't want an Easter themed cup or plate or whatever, when you cut them out like this, I gotta let that dry for a minute, just cut out around everything and leave the eggs off. Don't put the eggs on. You don't have to. And then if you leave the eggs off, it's just a bunny, right? It's just a bunny cup. So I'm going to start down here, and I'm just going to cut some of it off. Go up to here. So I, we were, <laughs> they were commenting that I was cutting off the bunny heads, but Sambao did that too on this one. They've cut the bunny like you've got the front of the bunny, but not the back. I'm not the only one that cuts bunnies. It's not, not just me. So I'm going to leave the eggs off this one because then it's no longer associated with a holiday or anything. It's just a rabbit. You ordered bunnies? Ah, yay! You can't wait to use them. Yeah, you know, my new celadons will look great. You can put them on top of these and you'll still see your underglaze decal. You can do clear glaze on the outside if you don't want to do that, and then a color on the inside and maybe on just the rim, which would kind of give you an effect like this one here. See how we got color inside, clear glaze outside, color on the handle? So you could do that, but with the little celadons. So we'll cut these out. This is the kind of thing, if you plan ahead, because you have limited studio time, you could do this sort of work like in the evenings or on your lunch break, right? And you can cut these out so you're ready to go as soon as you get to the studio. I'm going to put that bunny on there. I'm going to put these flowers. We're not putting you eggs on. I'm sorry. You don't get to be on this. Next time, maybe. I might use them for something else. If I had made this a little earlier, like two months ago, I might have put the Easter stuff on. But Easter is so close. Although you can't, you mean? I put my Easter decorations up in February, and they usually stay up until July because I forget to take all the Easter stuff down. Just kind of like the colors, too. So really, I mean, look, I'm still drinking out of a Halloween mug. So what am I talking about? I just don't even, don't listen to me. <laughs> All right, so we got our running bunny. So let's put him on. I have to turn it towards me so that I can line him up correctly. So let's do this. I'm just gonna smooth him out. Trying to get away, get all those wrinkles out or air bubbles out of there. So I think a lot of people are afraid of underglaze decals because it seems 
different or maybe it's new and you haven't tried it yet, but it's actually really easy, as I hope you're seeing, and really fun. And you could just put this on, you know? You could just put the little one element, just the little bunny on something, and that's it. You don't have to do other things. You could also add text to this. You know, you could hand letter it. You could do a laser decal that you make, or if you know how to screen print, you could screen print your text on here. So there's a lot of options. You could stamp it on too. Uh, Scraffito, Mishima, right? So there's that bunny. Let's put the other bunny on the back. So we'll line them up. So this bunny is there. Often if I'm just trying to find, you know, to try to get it approximately in the center, I'll use a tool. Doesn't really matter what it is. You could use a needle tool. They roll. So needle tools can be in, in my hands, you know, just waiting for it to fall on the ground. So something like my knife, it's not going to roll. And it doesn't need to be perfect. All right, this one I'm just going to start with the sponge and tap it on. I'm supporting the inside so I don't press too hard, or if I do, I have some resistance in there. All right, so we got two bunnies or hairs. They look more like uh, what we saw in Texas, don't they, Kev? They're like the big jackrabbits that you'd see down at night running around in Texas. I like jackrabbits. Okay, so we've got a bunch of options for the flowers, you know. We could put this one right here. Slid him down. Come back up. Come back up. My cup's a little bit dry. But if it was wetter, it, you know, it would still work fine. And I could have put them on as soon as I threw this at the wheel, but I saved them so I could do it for you. So you guys think you're going to give this a try? That's there. So now I've got two. We're going to put one down here. I could have cut that extra little tail off that flower, but it won't matter. Nothing's going to go down there. If I was worried about laying on another decal, and that might get in the way of it, but I'm not going to. Then this one here, let's put this one on. That was kind of low. Let's put this one higher. And you could go ahead and pick out more of these little wildflower elements and just cover it with them. And if you hand built a cup and you didn't use the decal the way I just demonstrated where we put it on first, but if you hand built your cup and then Afterwards, you want to do this to it, you could. So this would be a great way to add these on if you didn't want to put the whole sheet on and just want to put them on later. The bunny heads could be peeking up over the edge, right? They're peeking up over the edge. They're coming up off the bottom. That's what we're gonna. That's what we're gonna tell ourselves. It's true. I'll put this little guy here, a little daisy. So very little in pottery is quick, you know, it takes time, just like with everything. So using decals, same thing, takes a little time and patience. Patience is good to have in pottery. Pottery will teach you patience. Anyone who's ever waited for their kiln to cool after firing knows this, right? <laughs> Everybody's like, yes, waiting for the kiln to cool. Takes forever. Feels like forever. Do you know how I deal with it? 
I just fire another kiln. So there's always a cool kiln waiting to be opened. Just, just keep firing. That's all. No. <laughs> Go back to the studio and make more things. And then you won't be thinking about that. Right? We have one more flower. Where shall we put him? I think it's got to go up top here. Right there. And these can wait on the clay, as you, you can see. I put it on, and it's been a few minutes since I applied that first one. And they can wait, but don't let the clay dry with them on, because what can happen is the transfer can actually go back to the paper, and when you peel it off, it won't be very even. So what you do, if you've noticed that happening to you when you're working, what I would suggest is take a sponge. So some of you who live in a really, hu really dry climate, a really hot climate, you might struggle with them drying out on you as you're applying a more complicated composition like this. So just go back with your damp sponge and just tap it again. It reactivates everything. And then you can go ahead and peel it off. But don't let them wait too, too long. So when you've used pieces of transfer, you can see the outline. I'm not rubbing at near the edge. So you can avoid that if you keep your sponge to just, do you see how I'm kind of also folding it up? And really keeping it to the inside. I'm not wiping the clay, so I'm not removing any material, which is what happens if you're wiping. All right, let's see what we got here. Go down here and see if you can see this. Just want to grab the end, and you want to be very careful. You don't want to nick your clay, but if you do, it's easy to fix. Just smooth it out. I think I got the clay. Oh, come on. I need a little, I need a better tool. Somebody had dental picks. So look, see how nice that is? And I'll hold it up close to the camera because I don't know if we're zoomed in. And you'll see there's no, wait for the focus to catch up with everybody. Do you see how we don't have an outline from the cut at all from it? So when you're applying it, don't wipe it. You're not, you don't want to wipe off or back onto the underglaze decal. You want to just keep it right in. And this little area here, you just take, I mean, take your damp finger, smooth it out, and that takes care of that. So it won't, won't be a thing. I need some dental picks. Any of my members dentists or dental hygienists, you guys? I could probably pick a setup. <laughs> uh, the needle tool works well. I feel like the, the knife... This little Dolan clay knife works the best. I feel like it's a really nice little tip for removing the underglaze decals. So, and I see folks that are joining a little late missed the beginning. Yeah, you can use underglaze decals on any type of clay, whether it is been, it's wet clay, it's leather hard clay, it's bone dry greenware or bisqueware, but they work best on wet or leather hard clay. But you can use them on any clay like any stage and any clay, I should say too. Just keep in mind if you're using a black clay and you're putting a black decal on it, I don't know how well you're gonna get your, your decal to, to show up, but you know. So I, I don't, so I've gotta turn it this way. I didn't have light. So peel that down. Got our little daisy down here, let's peel this. these flowers here, and then grab that edge down there at the bottom. There we go. Peel it up. Bunny. So normally when I do the peeling, I don't like hunch over funnily like this. I usually will do it sitting down <laughs> so I can see what I'm doing because that just makes life more pleasant. Uh, we got this guy right here. And I'll go back and smooth any area that the knife has dug into the clay. 
When I'm doing a broadcast, the light is all blaring into my eyes, so it's really hard for me to see the actual pieces. I, you guys probably don't know this. I'm basically blinded by light when I'm filming because of the lighting. So I really can't see very well most of the time when I'm teaching. I just wing it, and I'm like, oh, I hope that's where it is. Got to do something about those studio lights being so bright. But I'll smooth these all out later. There. And that would just be, again, I would take a sponge, something like this, and go in and just smooth it out. You could also get those triangle cosmetic sponges and use them because they get in these little areas so well. And then if you're not happy with the smoothing job, you can go in with a rib like this and take out any lines. But here, let's take a look close up. We've got our bunny, some flowers, another bunny, our hair, more flowers. And you know, you could decide, oh, I want a flower here, right? I don't have one, I want one there. So you can put another one in. We didn't put the eggs on, here's the eggs. You know, you could have put the eggs somewhere in here if you wanted to, but I wanted to do something that wasn't so Easter-y, but I might still put the eggs on the bottom because rabbits lay eggs, right? <laughs> so could you st stick a piece of tape to it and peel it off or if it's too wet? You know, I have never thought of trying that, but that's a brilliant idea. Um, somebody out there try it for me. I don't, I, I can't do it right now. Somebody else will probably have time before I can. But yeah, um, I think the dental pick works nicely because, you know, I'm trying to go at this with the knife and you got to get up in here and pull it away. The dental pick has that little hook. So you can kind of go in and just hook it and pull. I don't know who shared that. Someone shared using a dental pick to pull them off. And I was floored. I was like, yes, that's the way to do it. But I don't have any. I guess who will be going to Amazon later to place an order? Me. <laughs> I need sunglasses from this, right? Oh my gosh, I know. <laughs> Maybe blinded by the lights, but I look great. And the pots look good and that's what matters. Exactly, that's all we care about. Is the pot, that really it's not me, it's all about, it's not about me, it's about the pots. And that's the truth, right? So. <laughs> So you're binge watching uh, Clay Share. Ooh, exciting. The Cricut weeding tool, Charlie. You're brilliant. I have one. I have one. I actually use the Cricut. Uh, premium members are going to get a template file for the Cricut. Or you can print it out, I believe, too, on paper. So, yay. Use dental picks for removing transfers. You can get them on Amazon. Yeah. And everybody else is Amazon. I, so, yeah. I'm going to be visiting Amazon later. But the weeding tool, I already have one, so maybe I'll just grab that and steal my Cricut weeding tool. And then when Kevin uses the Cricut next and he can't weed stuff, he'll be like, where's the weeding tool? And I'll be like, do, 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 I don't know. <laughs> Beating tweezers, another good idea, right? So the other thing you could do is if you wanted to, you could add underglaze to it while the transfers were on and then peel them away and use the transfer as a stencil. We're, we're going to be doing that next in prime time. So when you're doing that, you want to think about the shape the paper is. So you either want to cut really, really close to the decal, and that's your outline, or you cut it into a decorative shape, a heart, a flower, a circle, I don't know, you pick. And then you apply that, and then it looks like it belongs, right? But if you just cut them out like I have this one here, which is kind of haphazard, angular, no, that doesn't look great. But for what we did here, it's perfect. So there we have it. We have cute little cup done with this one. I have got the sweet little bunnies during the break. I am going to finish this and make it into the mug. So premium members, you're going to get to see this in a bit. So, or you know a hygienist to get you one. Exactly. That's right. So you, you're... Your hygienist friend hooks you up with one, and then you don't have to buy one. You just make her a mug or something, right? That's the exchange rate for her dental tools. <laughs> All right. Any questions about using underglaze decals or underglaze transfers? I, I mean, I think it's pretty cut and dry. Cut. Cut and clay. 
Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Tried. Tried on that one. It didn't quite work. But uh, the Easter decals are great. Of course, they have decals for all the seasons. You're not limited to just Easter, right? You're never limited to anything in pottery. You can do whatever you want. All right, so we're going to, we're done. Uh, we have a question? Good question. Did you let the uh, transfer paper burn off? Oh, so the problem with that is when it burns off, it might actually take some of the underglaze with it, and it can also leave behind a rough surface. So you really want to peel it off. You don't want to leave it on. It, it just doesn't, it just makes a bit of a mess and isn't very nice. So could you do it? You can. I mean, you can do anything you want, but I, I would not. I would take it off. Yeah. It's, uh, it wouldn't be great. When I was first starting pottery, there was, it was like all these rules. Like, all right, you can't put certain things in the kiln because it's bad. And I was like, watch me. <laughs> so when people say you shouldn't do something, I'm immediately like, I'm going to do that. But I, I mean, I would definitely, if you really want to know, put it on, leave the paper on fire, see what happens. Right? I, I mean, it's the best way to find out everything, to always try it out. And then you know. Um, I've never left the paper on. I've only been told. So there you go. I've never left the paper on and fired it. So I've never seen it firsthand. I've just been told. And Sandbow does recommend you remove the paper. So I, I'm not going to put it on a piece of clay and leave it. Because I, maybe I will. We'll see. We'll see what I do. I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> so can you add underglaze to the decal, then put it on the clay? Yeah, uh, you can, actually. You could. You could add color to your decal. And then, but the thing you run into is the underglaze, if it's too thick, when you put it on, it could crack off a bit and it might not transfer as well as the silk screen version, but you sure could. It's better to actually do it the other way around. Apply your underglaze decal first, then add your color after. So for this, if I wanted to color it, I would wait until I have to trim this little cup, he, which yeah, that will be tomorrow. I'm going to cover it with plastic, and then in the morning I'll come out to the studio, I'll trim this little cup, and if I wanted to add color to it, that would be the time to add little dots of color. You can also wait and add color once it's been bisque fired, so when it's bisque wear. Either way, just keep in mind if you scrub your brush onto these lines, they will smear and will come off a bit. So you just got to be delicate with it. But either way will work. It's entirely up to you. Uh, sometimes I forget when I want to add color to things to do it before I bisque fire it. And so then I just do it during the bisque fire. It'll work both ways. All right. Any other? So you like adding some decals to the interior as well. I mean, I've got this egg. <laughs> Actually, no, let's put a flower. I stuck stick to my guns, right? It doesn't matter. I'm... I'm probably going to keep this, so it do does it matter? Does it matter? Poor Kevin. He's like, oh, lady. I know, i got to finish that mug, don't I? No, we're going to stick this on, the inside. Ready? What, can't, what, what you got? Go over. Ah, you say that to me. All right, we're going to stick this little little guy in there. I'll never get him out. I'll leave him in and burn him off. And we'll see what happens. Yeah? Is that the plan? No, we're not going to do that. <laughs> so if you're putting it on the inside, just make sure you can put your hands inside. You can also wrap it over the edge. That could be fun. Oftentimes, I will do a more opaque glaze on the inside of my pieces. And I, I think that's why I don't usually put them in there. But I do love that little, little element like people who make cups that put little froggies in the bottom and stuff. Like your mug, you're drinking out of a coffee mug. You go to a friend's house and they give you a cup of coffee and you're drinking your coffee or your tea, whatever they make you, and you get to the bottom and there's a frog staring at you. Like, that's awesome. So it's like, oh, funny, funny thing to do when friends come to visit. The frog mug. <laughs> All right. Let's see. See if I can get this little guy off. Let's see. I'm going to put my, I'm going to just pull it with my fingers. Yay! 
All right, we'll go to we'll go over here and you guys can see it. Oh, look inside. There's a little flower. See? So it's a little something, a little extra. Great suggestion, right? Fabulous. Okay, there we have it. Using Sambao underglaze decals, underglaze transfers, doesn't matter whose you're using. This is works for all of them. I have a ton more classes on Clayshare if you want to find out more about using them or learn how to make your own. Next, in prime time, we're making the egg-shaped tray, and we are going to be using underglaze decals. We're going to be using underglaze. We're going to be stamping. We're going to be doing Mishima, and we are going to be doing Scruffito all in one massive, huge, fun springtime tutorial. So premium members, join me at 6.15 p.m. Everybody else, I'll see you next Wednesday for another fun live. Um, all right, take care. Be well, everybody make great pots. Bye.